God is a God of new beginnings. So take a deep breath. Let go of yesterday, because God forgives our sins as far as the East is from the West. Receive this day, because His mercies are new every morning, and that includes this morning. Lift up your hearts. We're going to find God in every moment, and particularly today, we're going to find them in people. The word for today is people. Begin to think about the people in your life that you will see today. We're walking through the early chapters of Genesis. And as you know, if you've been a part of this, there is a refrain that just throbs like a song, like a chorus that keeps repeating as God creates. It's good. It separates light from the darkness, makes light. He sees light. That's good. The day that's good. The sky, that's good. The earth, the dry land, that's good. Um, plants, flowers, trees, that's good. Great creatures in the sea, the birds above, it's good. When he gets done with it all, it's very good until we come to the second chapter and that quite remarkable statement where God says, not good. Up until this moment, the Hebrew word is tov. Good, 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 good. Altogether, very good. And then not good for human beings to be alone. So that's what I want to talk about today, aloneness and why it is not good. Now, very often this is misunderstood because there is Adam and Eve is coming, and we'll talk about that more. People interpret this simply in terms of marriage and sometimes even think that to be married is a more normal state than to be not married or that it's a superior state, in spite of the fact that the greatest life that has ever been lived was lived by Jesus, who of course was single. So it is possible to have a flourishing life quite apart from that. That little word good, as we have seen, doesn't simply mean that something is beautiful, although it can be, or aesthetically pleasing. It's not even primarily moral goodness, although it includes that. It's mostly, as John Walton and others write, a functional term. It's like if you're waiting for liftoff and we want to make sure the rocket works, check, 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 you're checking off points. And so everything was becoming functional. It was coming online. Yep, we can go forward. But human beings were created to fulfill God's project, to be a part of his cosmic efforts, and to create a beautiful community that could flourish throughout the earth. And one person cannot do that by themselves. So not good, not good, not good. You will notice, even though Adam was existing in the presence of God, it was still not good. We need each other. We cannot do what God is calling us to do by ourselves. So the invitation today is move toward people. Where do I find myself? What excuse, what barrier get in the way? How do I move towards people? This is an article by Tish Harrison Warren recently in the New York Times. For her, it was social media. The first time I truly admitted something was awry, my use of social media was the day of my daughter's first grade Christmas performance in 2019. She had been anticipating the show for weeks, practicing her song again and again. I arranged my work schedule to be there, was running a little late, but I could make it if I heard. As I was getting ready to leave, a Twitter conversation was on my mind. A mind that was locked in the Twitter often enough that it often thought in 280 character bytes, composed unbidden tweets constantly, and always felt a little twitchy and restless. You ever feel twitchy? Ever feel restless? Not good. Alone, not good. So before I started the car, I pulled Twitter up my phone, checked my mentions, and replied. No big deal. I did this all the time. Yet those few minutes ended up making me a few minutes later than I would have been. I entered the auditorium at my daughter's school moments after her class had finished their songs. I missed it. When my daughter realized I hadn't seen her sing, her face fell. She didn't cry or blame me, but she was clearly and justly disappointed. I was too. There are only so many kids' Christmas performances we get in this life. When their little voices are all full of innocence and joy when their tiny fingers wave at you from the stage, when they still desperately want you there. Not good being alone. I recall nothing about that conversation on Twitter. Not the topic, not the responses, not the tone. But I will never forget that crestfallen look on my daughter's face. And she writes about how for her, that was the beginning of a journey to say, I need to change something about 
uh, my life on social media. It's interesting. She notes the psychologist Jonathan Haidt finds that more than two thirds of us believe that the impact of social media overall on our relational lives, on our levels of civility, problems of depression and anxiety, particularly uh, among young women, uh, create more difficulties than they do. Today, move towards people. If that means move it away from the screen for a little while, do that. It is not good to be alone because we were made for community with each other. I have on this little shelf behind me these reminders of community that I love. And, and you know about this. We, we fill our lives, our spaces with that. There is a blue-footed booby over there to remind me of the trip I took with my dad to the Galapagos Islands in the last months of his life. This is a little picture of two beautiful children. That is my sister Barbie and me. And she gave that to me when we were 50 years old, when we were tiny little kids. That's a little bust that I love from Abraham Lincoln. It was actually sculpted by a congressman who gave it to Dallas Willard, and Dallas' family gave it to me uh, after he died. There's Chuck Bergstrom's movie star picture. He's my friend. There's what my son-in-law gave me from Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Um, this is a picture of Jerry Hawthorne, who was my teacher when I was in college and had a deep impact on my life. And that's me when I was 28 years old. I am not kidding you. I still have the same shirt that I'm wearing right here. I've, I've got this shirt 35 years some later. And the main reason I keep it is because uh, it reminds me of him. It is not good to be alone. How can you move toward people today? Because you cannot achieve God's purpose for your life. This is an issue of our mandate to be a part of building a community in God's cosmos if you are on your own. It is so not good for people to be alone that the Surgeon General has been writing about this. He writes, we have become a lonely nation. It's time to fix that. This is just a few days ago. Uh, a patient of mine, he says, once shared with me in a most unusual way. He had worked for years in the food industry with a modest salary and a humble lifestyle. Then he won the lottery. Overnight, his life changed. He quit his job, moved to a large house, gated community. Yet, as he sat across from me, he sadly declared, winning the lottery was one of the worst things that ever happened to me. Now, whoever tells that story? Wealthy but alone. Wealthy but alone. Not good, not good. This once vivacious social man no longer knew his neighbors, lost touch with his former co-workers, soon developed blood pressure and diabetes. Surgeon General writes, I thought about his story in 2017 when I found myself struggling with loneliness. My first stint as Surgeon General had ended, I was suddenly disconnected from the colleagues with whom I had spent most of my waking hours. That might not have been so bad had I not made a critical mistake, largely neglecting my friendship during my tenure, convincing myself I had to focus on work and couldn't do both. Even when I was physically present with people I loved, oh. even when, I gotta go do something else now, even when, it's all right, we're not in a hurry, even when I was physically present with people that I loved, I wasn't present. I was often checking the news, responding to messages in my inbox, turning off the alarm on my phone. After my job ended, I felt ashamed to reach out to friends I had ignored. I found myself increasingly lonely and isolated, and it felt as if I was the only one who felt that way. Loneliness like depression with which it can be associated, can chip away and erode your sense of who you are. At any one moment, about one out of every two Americans is experiencing measurable levels of loneliness as our society has grown increasingly wealthily, uh, financially affluent, we have grown relationally impoverished. So today, Move towards the people in your life today, not alone. Spend 15 minutes reaching out to the people in your life so that you can connect. Just pull out what are some of the reminders that make you think, oh yeah, I'm not alone. I've got people to be grateful for. Spend 15 minutes today, whatever else you do, 
calling, texting, talking face to face, letting somebody know that you love them, that you care about them. You can introduce yourself to your neighbors. There may be some that you don't know. This very day, in a couple of hours, Nance and I are going to go up onto, there's a cul-de-sac, kind of a circular area. And once a week, all the neighbors in our neighborhood bring lawn chairs out there and sit and talk with each other. Neighbors used to do that kind of thing. It's not good to be alone. Sit down with somebody that you don't know real well, or maybe somebody that you disagree with, and talk with them about what do they think. Be genuinely curious about them. If there is somebody from the history of your life to whom you owe a debt, give them a call. Write them a letter. You can do this today. Remember, not good to be alone. Take one step towards somebody. End of teaching. Beginning of your day with God and the people that he made and loves. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim. I'm a part of the team here at Become New. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you'd like to receive a text alert whenever we release a new video, you can text the word become to the number 855-888-0444. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. You can text that request to that same number, 855-888-0444. There's a group of us who meet every day to pray over those requests. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.